With us today to help identify some of the imagery is Dr. Justin Wilkinson, a scientist with the Crew Earth Observations Office here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, the office that coordinates the Earth imagery activity for Station and Shuttle Astronauts. Uh, thank you for being here, Justin, and I'll apologize in advance for asking you to uh, identify imagery on the fly today. Um, but uh, with no further ado, I'd like to get to it and ask you a question about what we're looking at now in this scene. I think this is uh, the west coast of Madagascar, um, the coast that faces uh, southern Africa, and Madagascar is the big island off southeast Africa. Yeah, we've got rivers coming down to the sea there, a little bit of sediment in the sea, and a lot of cloud. The white stuff's the cloud. And this imagery is taken from an altitude of uh, normally about 220 miles for missions that uh, go to the space station or space station missions. Uh, and uh, high-definition television cameras are a fairly recent addition to shuttle and station flights, only being flown over the past uh, few years on board. Here we have the north coast of Australia and Carpen the Gulf of Carpentaria and some islands. Uh, the biggest island at the bottom of the screen there is Groot Island, which means the big island in Dutch, with a lot of sediment from the local streams. Not quite sure where this one is. A lot of cloud, and there's a bit of land at the lower right, but we're not quite sure where this is. And also in this view, a portion of the uh, space shuttle window, this obviously imagery taken from the shuttle. These are some little atolls probably in the central Pacific or maybe the western Pacific, maybe Bora Bora or Tahiti, we're not sure. Is it common to get a lot of imagery of islands in the Pacific? Oh yes, it's one of the few things that you see as you go by in what otherwise feels to some people like a big empty space. James, this is the coast of Namibia in southwestern Africa, uh, the very dry desert coast of the Namib Desert. You can see a cloud band uh, butting up against the shore and some straight sand dunes in the lower left of the picture. Big mountains top left and a big river coming down to the sea coming in from the left of the view now. Yeah, those are big red sand dunes that the astronauts say is one of the most beautiful sights that you can get when you're flying. And uh, to uh, add some background information, Justin, your office trains the astronauts before each flight as well as uh, studying the pictures upon their return. Correct, yeah. Namibia is one of the driest countries in Africa, but it was a, a rainy season, a very rainy season. We almost never see such heavy cloud over that country. This is the Persian Gulf top right with the Zagros Mountains uh, in a very clear picture. Zagros Mountains with snow on them in Iran, the country of, in the country of Iran. And there's really no cloud cover in this imagery. Right. Everything white here is snow, not cloud. You can see the sun glint point moving across the top of the picture top right coming towards the center where the sun is reflected off rivers. This is the coast of the Kamchatka Peninsula, which is a big finger of land that sticks off easternmost Russia into the Pacific Ocean. And here is a smaller finger of land in China sticking into the Pacific Ocean. In winter, you can see all the snow lower left. This is called the Tsingtao Peninsula. We recognize it. And again, the sun glint point moving along the coast, upper center. Is sun glint a, a useful um, item for Earth observations and handheld photography? Uh, the, the name of the town coming into the picture lower left is Shenyang. Uh, yes, uh, just to answer you, James, the, the sun glint point is extremely useful. It can show uh, even tiny water bodies, and it also shows lots of features within the oceans, uh, internal waves and wind gust fronts and things like that. And again, this is snow in China. This is snow, no cloud. All the little black dots, the big black patch down there is a city, and the small black dots are, are villages. The snow seems to melt faster in, in urban places. This is the smooth east coast of uh, the Kamchatka Peninsula, again moving back a bit north of the last photograph. The a last very striking day. coast. Very striking coast, and as you move inland, it gets maybe even more striking as a picture because of all the volcanoes on this peninsula and the uh, the snowy mountains 
There's a volcano just coming into the picture on the top left there. You can see a little knob-shaped feature. There is a bit of cloud in this picture, the, the diffuse bits of white in the middle of the picture, probably cloud. And top left, too. Uh, lots, lots of cloud on the left of the picture. Now you can see the coast on the other side of the peninsula. And uh, speaking of volcanoes, my understanding is that active volcanoes are a common target uh, of imagery to be taken by astronauts. Very much so. Very much so. Even dead volcanoes that, that haven't erupted recently are interesting uh, from space because you can see faults that align towards them and tell geologists something about the environment of where the volcano is located. And you actually receive requests from scientists in the field who, who make those requests for certain imagery of certain sites. We are corresponding with quite a number of scientists, yes. This circular feature right in the middle of the view is known as the Richotte structure. Uh, it's not a volcano. Uh, pressures inside the earth pushed the earth up and created, after erosion, a circular feature. That's in Mauritania and West Africa. Here, moving a bit further into the continent, are the, uh, I think, looks like the Tassili Hills in uh, eastern Nigeria, I would say. Layers of black rock that have been eroded off sloping towards the viewer. And coming into the view on the left is, a, is an impact crater uh, right in the middle of the picture right about now and some wind streaks. We know where this area is because it's a bit unique. We've got a, a major dune field coming into the picture on the left there. The uh, Oriental uh, Sand Sea, as it's called in French, and on the top is the Isawan Sand Sea. Astronauts like to photograph these strange places, strange for us who live in vegetated places. And, uh, of course, deserts one of the highly visible um, landforms on the Earth from space. Very much so, and particularly because uh, they're cloud-free mostly. There are parts of the, the globe that we almost never see, like the Congo Basin and uh, Indonesia, because of the cloud. There's a haziness coming into the picture lower left, which I think means some blowing dust in the atmosphere, so you can't see the red dunes very well. And probably still in Africa, a lot of cloud, um, scraps of cloud all over the place. You, you you're brings a question to mind about sandstorms, though. They are visible from orbit, and you see those in imagery quite often? Very much so. In fact, especially over this coast, this is the coast of Tunisia in North Africa, and just recently we've had some big dust storms being swept out of the Sahara, which is on the right of the picture, up into the Mediterranean, yes. This is just a little bit north of the last picture. This is the island of Sicily, uh, with cloud over Mount Etna, so you can't quite tell that there's a big volcano in the middle of the picture right now. And there's the toe of the boot of Italy coming into the picture from the left. See a good example of sun glint on the right with the sea reflecting the sun. This is the Bay of Otranto, and this, I believe, is the coast of uh, northern Chile in South America. It's a very straight coast, except for that strange headland out to the top right just disappearing. And so the desert is this, uh, the first part of the inland zone, and then you see much blacker at the top of the picture uh, the Andes Mountains with some many dozens of volcanoes and there's a dry lake coming in on the top left as well with an island in the middle of it which is a volcano as well and here comes some cloud over the high Andes. The dark blue area in the middle of the picture is called the tongue of the ocean in the Bahama Islands um, with Andros Island in the lower right. Uh, the deep parts of the sea, m more than 4,000 feet deep, I think, are in dark blue, and the very shallow parts, maybe one or 200 feet at the most, are, are the light blue. And one of the, again, one of the more visible features from orbit? 
is this area? Yes, again, the uh, astronauts will say that the, the blues that you see in the Bahamas are some of the most beautiful scenes that you can get when you circle the planet.